Welcome to my NHL 23 Detroit Red Wings franchise mode. I'm going to start off by going over a couple of the rules. I want it to be more realistic because a lot of YouTubers just tease the AI and they make it way too easy to win. I'm only going to be offering trades that I believe are at least somewhat realistic. However, I can accept trades from the AI even if I think they're unrealistic because some GMs in real life offer some really bad trades, aka Taylor Hall for Adam Larson, Martin Erat for Philip Forsberg. A lot of trades end up very one-sided, so if the AA offers me a dumb trade, I am allowed to take advantage of that. I am not allowed to trade people I sign in free agency until they are in their last or second last year of their contract, so if I sign someone to a bad deal, I gotta live with that. In this game, it's incredibly easy to build through the draft, so I'm only gonna be allowed to use my first and second round picks, and after that, I have to auto-draft you get an unrealistic amount of value through the draft if you make every selection manually. Finally, I'm only going to be allowed to trade picks that are three years ahead or closer. As you see here, we are the Detroit Red Wings. Our top three players are Dylan Larkin, Moritz Sider, and I'm kind of surprised to see David Perron up here, so let's get into it. No division realignment. We're going to turn GM firing off. Head coach is not going to be editing the lines. Fog of war off. Player morale is honestly just super annoying, so we're going to turn that off and everything else looks good. We're gonna be playing on full sim, 20 minutes and injuries are going to be off. We're gonna turn sim engine scoring on high, draft class quality to low, and generated prospect quality to low. So we're gonna look at some trade values and contracts now. Moritz Sider is the most valuable player on the team as an 87 overall medium elite at only the age of 21. Larkin's medium elite, Raymond medium elite, same with Edvinson, Zadina, I'm kind of surprised to see as a medium elite. I feel like at this point maybe he should be medium top six, but I'm just going to go with it. Marco Casper, I'm also a little bit surprised he's as a medium elite, but I'm happy to see it. Bertuzzi's an 86, Hronik and Koff are both 85s, Perron 86, Ron 85. I had to add in Elmer Soderblom, he was not appearing on the roster, I'm not really sure why. I made him an 80 medium top six because he was only a 55 overall before. And he did make the team, absolutely looked amazing in his first game, scoring the only goal that was actually on a goalie, the game winning goal. So he looks really good. He's six foot eight. So super excited about him. Some of the prospects we have would be Valeno and Bergeron are two of our top forward prospects, both medium top six. McIsaac's medium top four. Wallander only 59, medium top four, but maybe he'll grow. We've got Sherratt and Kubelik down here bunch of other depth defensemen you can pause it if you want to look but here's some other lower value players on our team for goalies our most valuable goalie is Sebastian Kosa who is a 74 overall medium elite Huso and Nedeljkovic are going to be the tandem duo for this upcoming season they're both 85 overall I'm not really sure why Huso's value is more than Nedeljkovic when Nedeljkovic is younger Yen Bednash. So a lot of Red Wings fans in real life are really scared that Larkin could walk in free agency or potentially even get traded, you never know. But in this game, we're not going to have to worry about that. Larkin only wants a six year deal. I'm kind of surprised he doesn't want that max eight, but that price goes up quite a bit. That's actually about what he's asking for in real life, so you know what, let's keep it realistic. Let's offer him, I'm going to offer him eight by eight and a half million a year. In real life, of course, his agent said his comparison should be Matt Barzal, who signed an 8 by 9 million a year. So let's see what Larkin has to say to that deal. I think that'll be fair. He's the captain. He is the first line center. And there it is. Dylan Larkin accepts, and he is going to be one of the faces of this franchise as I tried to build a dynasty here. So our top line is getting that plus one. We've got Bertuzzi, Larkin, and Raymond. Line two, I want Zadina to get some serious ice time. He has medium elite potential, so hopefully he grows with Andrew Kopp and Jacob Verana. Line three, we've got Robbie Fabry, six foot eight, Elmer Soderblom, and David Perron. And then the fourth line, I've got Michael Rasmussen, Pew Suter, and Dominic Kubelik. Sunfist could draw in at some point, depending on how the season goes. On defense, we've got Sherat, Sider, Horonic, Mata, and Lindstrom and Pisic. In goal, we've got Vili Husso and Alex Nedeljkovic. We have a pretty big trade offer right here. 
Billy Huso for a second round pick, a fourth round pick, and Philip Grubauer. I have zero interest in Grubauer though, the way he was last year. If he sims like that in the video game at all, we do not want to have that problem on our hands, so we're going to decline this trade. The Wild want to give us John Merrill back. He's honestly on a pretty good contract. Zarnik's not going to see NHL time, but I'm going to decline it for now. So I don't really see Merrill as part of the long-term future of this team. So two months into the season, we are 14-6-2, which is great to see. The Red Wings are finally looking to be playoff bound. It's too early to say for sure. We're going to look at our stats here, and Dylan Larkin is playing like that top line center. He's looking like he's worth that $8.5 million per year with 26 points in 22 games. Perron with 21 and 22 is great. Bertuzzi with 20 and 22, pretty solid as well. Raymond playing well with 18. Verona and Kopp, 17 and 16. Kubalik and Fabry both have 15. Michael Rasmussen playing on the fourth line has 15 points. That is honestly really surprising. Red Sider with 15. I was going to say he's not even on the home screen here. And there he is, 15, doing great. Pew Suter, 14. Elmer Soderblom, let's see if he's grown at all. Not at all yet. Still an 80 overall, medium top six. 12 points in 22 games. Really solid. Zadina, hopefully he starts producing a little more. That's the first disappointment. So almost this whole team is producing. It's really exciting. The goalies, Nadalkovic has taken over as the starter, it appears. He's 8-4-1 with a 9.08 save percentage. While Huso has an incredible 8.72 save percentage. So you can see the standings in the bottom right corner right now. We are tied with the Maple Leafs in first place in the division. So you love to see that. I'm going to keep simming maybe all the way up to the trade deadline and then see where we're at. So now we're looking at the standings and our team has fallen off quite a bit. Montreal is somehow now in first place with 54 points. And our division is as tight as can be because the Buffalo Sabres are in eighth place. Look at them here. 48 points. We have 51 points. We're right in the middle. So I'm going to go check on the lines and see if I should change a couple things and hopefully we can go on a little winning streak here. So Larkin is still doing great. He's got 45 points in 44 games, but it looks like that second line might be struggling a bit. Verona is a minus three and Kopp is a minus five. They're doing okay offensively, but defensively it doesn't look like they're quite getting the job done. He has Adina here. He's a minus eight, still only an 82. We're definitely gonna have to move him down in the lineup. All right, so the forward lines are looking quite a bit different now. And now we've got Perron with Larkin and Raymond on that top line. Fabry, Kopp, and Bertuzzi on the second line. Verona, Soderblom, and Kubalik on the third. And Zadina drops down to the fourth line to play with Suter and Rasmussen. The Avalanche wanna give us a third and fourth and Justice Anunin. For a third, sixth, and Jordan Osterley, who is not playing for us. So I'm definitely intrigued by this deal. I want to see what Anunin's overall is. 76 medium starter. H22 is doing great in the AHL with a 918 save percentage. I don't see any reason to not take this deal. I mean, we're swapping thirds for thirds. They're ahead of us in the standings, so that's actually a good thing. We get a fourth, and I'm assuming they just need some depth on defense until they found Osterley. We're gonna we're gonna take that trade. So we're at the trade deadline day, and we're actually in second place now. But but this division is still so close. We have 73 points, tied with Montreal. But last place is still Buffalo, who still has 66. So they're not that far off. So I'm gonna enter the trade deadline as a conservative buyer because we are in a good place. But I also wouldn't be shocked if I sold a piece or two here. I'm not quite sure. It's gonna depend on who other teams want to get rid of. Patrick Kane is avail available, but he's got way too much trade value. Joe Pavelski would be cheap. 87 overall with very little value. He'd be a rental. Jonas Brodeen's a pretty good player, solid top four guy on a long-term deal. Parlamov we don't need. Spurgeon's aging, so we don't want that. Dumbo would probably help us out quite a bit. I did not edit my trade block going in, but Huso, Huso could be moved because Nedeljkovic has been the better goalie so far. Senators want to get rid of Josh Norris. He's only medium top six in this, so he's absolutely not worth that contract. 
been scrolling through teams and Zdeno Chara actually signed with the Columbus Blue Jackets and they want to trade him, so that's pretty funny. So I am going to try to make a trade for Joe Pavelski. He's on an expiring deal, so I don't want to give up too much to get him, but I think it's a deal that has to be done because his value is pretty low. So I'm going to be offering two thirds and William Wallander, who's a medium top four defenseman, 59 overall for Joe Pavelski in a fifth. Wallander's a really solid prospect in real life. Not sure if he'll reach his potential in this game or not. We'll have to wait and see, but let's see what the stars have to say. Trade is rejected and it's not even close in value. I'm surprised on the... Let's see if I take off the fifth at how close it makes it. Sweeten the value just a touch. All right, all right. Let's just add a seventh round pick here and... The trade will be accepted. And the Detroit Red Wings have acquired Joe Pavelski. That is a big deal. So I have a really big trade with the Minnesota Wild right here. We got Pew Suter, Jared McIsaac, and Dower Nielsen in exchange for a rental of Matt Dumba and then Marcus Foligno. I think Suter's younger, so the Wild might be able to re-sign him, help, help them retool. McIsaac's a solid young prospect, so let's see what the Wild have to say. Trade is rejected. I was going to throw in a fourth round pick and try it again. And the trade is accepted. Now I'm going to be trying to get Philip Broberg from the Edmonton Oilers. He's a 77 medium top four defenseman. Sunfist isn't going to draw into this team and neither is Wallman. Edmonton could totally use the depth. I could totally see Ken Holland making a trade like this in real life, not valuing Broberg properly. So I don't feel like this trade is too unrealistic. So let's see what the Oilers have to say. Not even close. Now second round picks are super valuable to me for this season. However, getting a guaranteed like really good prospect is absolutely worth giving one up for me. So I've added that on and I am very confident that the Oilers will say yes to this one. And they do. So we've got Philip Broberg and that's going to be the last trade I'll make. So we have a big trade here. Washington gets Pavel, Mint Yukov, and Lucas Dossel for TJ Oshi and Dmitry Orlov. So we're going to look at some trades here, see if there's any big ones. Josh Norris is now a member of the Montreal Canadiens for only a second and a third round pick. Zach Dean goes to Arizona. And wow, so Minnesota actually flipped P.U. Suter to the New York Rangers and they flipped Robert Haig for Matthew Robertson, Oscar Lindbaum, and Hunter Skinner. So they got a good haul for them. They're going for a full-on rebuild, I guess. New Jersey acquires Eric Gudbranson. That is just simply incredible. Great job, New Jersey. You have a fantastic general manager. Minnesota gets Chaika and Logan Thompson for Freddie Goodrow and John Merrill. I think Minnesota definitely wins that trade. Columbus gets Donato. Boston gets Ryan Hartman for Fabian Lysel. I think Minnesota is going to be a juggernaut in the future. They've made a lot of pretty good trades here. Islanders get Sonny Milano, Flames get Martin Kaut, and the Avalanche get Poirier, so a prospect swap there. Ryan Graves and Andres Janssen to Winnipeg. Drew Ann and Monaghan to the Anaheim Ducks. P.K. Subban not yet, not yet retired, and he goes from Buffalo to Philadelphia. That's incredible. Dante Fabro, really good young defenseman to LA for Tyler Madden and some picks and prospects. That's a pretty big one right there. Max Domi to Philly, so Philly must be good. Arturi Lekkinen to Arizona, that's a really weird one. Damon Severson to Vancouver. Ryan Suter to the Pittsburgh Penguins. And then not all these are trade deadline deals, so let's look at the lines now. So the team is looking a lot better now. We still have Perron, Larkin, and Raymond on that top line. Pavelski slots in nicely. Now we have a plus one on line two with Bertuzzi and Verana on his wings. Fabry Cop Felino is a really, really good third line. And then Zadina Soderblom and Kubalik is a really good fourth line. On defense, we've got Dumba and Sider on the top pair, getting a plus one. So I'm super happy about that. Mata and Hironik on line two. And Pizik and Sharat on line three. And we still got the same two goalies, Viliuso and Alex Nedeljkovic. So that's going to do it for this episode. I really hope you enjoyed watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Comment below any suggestions. And I'll see you in the next one.